Now, one of the truly amazing things about electric motorbikes is you can ride them indoors. They're amazing looking bikes, zero bikes, zero motorbikes. Yes. What do you call, I didn't even know what you call them. It's, motorbikes. it's a motorbike. They're motorbike. Yeah, yeah, they're it's motorbikes. motorbikes. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pedal them. No. <laughs> uh, and this one is brand new to this country. Yeah, it just arrived. Yeah, right. literally just arrived. Wow. And they're, and they're built in America? Yeah, made in California, Santa right. Cruz. I'm, as you know, I'm not a motorcyclist. And, the, and, and even touching them, I get a bit nervous. Because <laughs> they look fearsome and powerful beasts. I mean, the, it's, what's really interesting is how difficult it is to equate them to petrol bikes. Yeah, in it's terms uh, of power and output and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, they're they're 54 horsepower, right? Uh, and they're 68 foot pound of torque, and that's roughly equivalent to uh, in motorbike torque. That's a Ducati 916 worth of torque, so it's a thousand cc almost of, of torque, right? Uh, which is pretty meaty. Uh, 54 horsepower, so you're talking five six hundred cc of power, right? Uh, so to what it equates to uh, is is a mixture of those two, really. Right. So let's yeah. go 750. Right. <laughs> so, so so the equivalent of a 750 cc motorbike, because I assumed petrol motorbikes did like. I don't want 80 to 100 miles per gallon, which they don't. No, they don't. Um, it depends on, on which bike you're talking. There are sure. some bikes that can do over 100 miles per gallon, but uh, most of the popular uh, bikes will do between sort of 50, 60 to the gallon, something right. like that. Um, we're talking 556 to the gallon uh, on these the, bikes. That's that the equivalent. The, so the cost, so the co is that the cost equivalent in, in, in terms of what you plug in and how much electricity it uses? Yes, yes, yeah. So how, say it again, 500? 556, it's MPGE, yeah. 556, that's quite good. That's pretty good, yeah. yeah. The thing that everyone asks always is the range. I yeah. mean, what sort of range does, you know, if you, if you rode it carefully, and didn't thrash it, so what, you know, and you went for the maximum range, what do you reckon you could get out of it? Well, it's the 137 miles is the right. furthest range that we do. That's on a, a city riding, right. uh, normal riding, 80 to 90 miles, right. really easy. And the fact that there's no servicing, you don't have to worry about the coolant, oil, clutch, all that kind of stuff, yeah. all disappears, which is quite high maintenance on a, on a motorbike. Right. Um, but whereas on these, there's nothing to there's worry about. So that's, yeah. that's an interesting point, because on, a, on, a, on a, a regular petrol motorbike, there's quite a lot of, you have to service them quite regularly you need, to keep yeah. them going. Yeah, yeah they're 4,000 miles service intervals typically and you know in that time period on a motorbike you've um, you've got to think about the oil because the oil consumption if you can I mean some bikes would use a litre of oil every thousand miles wow. and that's within uh, within range so you have to make sure your oils are uh, checked um, you've also got clutches which wear out more quickly you've got things like that which you're constantly having to maintain I mean it's part of the fun of a bike yes it's, it's, some people like getting oily oily fingers it's, most bikers I know usually got one in a garage and yeah, loads of bits. In bits yeah 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 no I can do that that's yeah, fine yeah. but you can have one of those which yeah. is not working when the sun's shining and then you can have this which is always working because yeah. you, you never take it to bits right it's nothing to service the batteries will do uh, around sort of the 300,000 mile mark before the 80 percent of capacity so that's you'll nice. never the, the battery will outlast the bike that is very uh, interesting because that's a big fear of people with electric vehicles is what happens when the batteries fail? yeah because yeah. they're judging it on phones and laptops which yeah. is completely different yeah technology. i mean the the a motorbike will typically do and if you see a bike that's done 30,000 miles that's really high mileage for a motorbike right. whereas one of these you could use to and from work every day for five years and it's got 50,000 miles on or whatever and yeah. that's that's still 250,000 miles to go before it's 80 percent of capacity wow. so you, you, it's so yeah, that's interesting that the battery will outlast and presumably the motor as well I mean electric motors don't wear out do they? I mean, well it's a brushless motor it's a zero design it's the most compact powerful brushless motor in the world right uh, so it's uh, we're very it's proud of that one moving part yeah. It. yeah yeah that's it now I can't ride a motorbike but I know a man with a pink bike suit who can so after a quick bit of instruction from Guy, he set off. I think he likes it. A short ride through country lanes, around tight bends and up steep hills, and eventually he got bored. Ow! And there's a clue. Who is the masked rider in the pink bike suit on the yellow zero? This is uh, my good pal Danny John Jules, who's just ridden uh, for the first time. First time. The Zero S. The Zero S, amazing. So before you'd done this, you had ridden what the, the was a Yamaha. Or I rode a, a Yamaha Yam scooter right. in Japan at the yeah. uh, uh, Yamaha headquarters in the car park, and uh, you know it, it, it's you know it's, it does what it says on the can. Yeah, so gets you from A to B. Yeah. You know uh, if you're going to go down the shops or you're going to potter around town and yeah. stuff. Whereas. 
this baby, baby here. Yeah. You know, we, we, we were hacking through, you know, country roads. I could have quite easily have had someone on the back, a couple of panniers, right. and, you know, gone camping or right. whatever, and um, it, it, it would have served the purpose. I mean, so it really, I mean, because you're used to powerful petrol yeah. bikes, so, I mean, it, it compares very favourably then, does it? it, it easily. It shifts. Right. Easily. I mean, you know, I, I could overtake quite easily, yeah. um, you know, without thinking. Oh, am I, have I got enough juice or yeah. enough power to get past yeah. them? All very easy. Um, braking brakes are just like the, bike, the, the brakes on a, an ordinary bike. Right. And do you feel when you take you go off the throttle now yeah. before you put the brakes on? Do you feel it slow down? I mean, is the, is the motor slowing you down? Can you, you get some yeah, sort of you, engine braking? You get that kind of you know. It's like changing gear, right. you're changing down. Right. You, you know, as soon as you take it, it's like starts slowing down. Right. And and of course, you, you know, you, you brake. Um, in conjunction with that, yeah, yeah. If you want to brake harder, of course, but you know, say an emergency brake, you, yeah. you'd have that ability as well. Yeah. But you know, I didn't feel a, a, at all like, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm running out of road, right? To, yeah. to, to do the turn or, or to, to stop. And in terms of handling, because that's what I wouldn't know anything about. I mean, because you're used to different bikes. Yeah. But what's the handling like? The handling's great. Right. I mean, you know, when I was going around the roundabouts, you know, obviously, you know, the, the biker. The thrill is getting that lean, getting, getting as low getting as you that, can. Getting leaner. <laughs> a couple of times, I kind of nearly got my knee out. Wow. You know, just sort of a little bit. <laughs> not, not, not. You no, know, no. Just that thing of, mm, hey, yeah, it's got it there. Yeah, yeah. You can, I, I think you, you know, um, some of the more daring of us riders would yeah. have probably got their knee down around right. a couple of those roundabouts right. without no trouble at all. <laughs> Uh, yeah. But I mean, is it because it must be because the first time you drive an electric car, you know, no gears, no clutch, yeah. no noise, and you can't. You always think, oh, is it on? Is it working? Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. only part yeah. you've got to get used to. Yeah. You know, obviously, a couple of times you're going for the clutch. Yeah. You know, there isn't one. There isn't one. There isn't one. There's that thing of uh, oh, the car in front's uh, slowing down right. rather rapidly. What do I and do? The first thing in your mind normally is clutch. Put on the clutch brake and, yeah. bra and change down. Yeah. But you know, where's you go? Oh, and then you're just yeah. on the brake, yeah. no problem. The petrol tank. You it's have it's your sandwich hamper. You have your little sort of. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's deep, you know. It's like yeah. you, can, you can carry bits and bobs in there. Say so I need, you know, so I need you your sandwich. You little, you could have your thermos. It's thermos. You could eat Danny. You could put your thermos in there. Cup of tea. Yeah. A bit of Earl Grey. <laughs> a bit of Earl Grey. <laughs> after a bit of a burn up. After a bit of a burn up. Danny's gonna have for a burn up. He's gonna have a cup of Earl Grey. I'm gonna pick Bobby up. <laughs> We'll go for a little picnic. We'll go for a little spin. A little spin round the court. Oh, we're at the Ooh. golf club, Bobby. We're at the golf club. We should, we should maybe do a round. We bring our own tea because theirs is rubbish. <laughs> Now, since recording this episode of Fully Charged with Danny John Jules, I've heard some very sad news, and that is that Zero Motorcycles are no longer trading in the United Kingdom. They're incredibly successful in Europe, they're very successful in North America, but you can't buy a Zero motorbike in the UK anymore, which is a great shame. Uh, it had a lot to do with the complexities of government support for electric vehicles and that electric motorbikes don't constitute electric vehicles, and it seems a little bit of a shame uh, because they are absolutely amazing things. Now, you could argue that in the overall uh, CO2 outputs and energy use, uh, motorbikes really don't count for a great deal. Uh, that said, it's amazing technology. Uh, they're amazing machines. Um, but uh, So in future, I'm going to make some more shows about electric motorbikes, um, probably with Danny or someone else who can ride a motorbike, and uh, certainly about electric push bikes, which are really coming to the fore now. They're becoming more and more advanced, lighter. They go further, all that stuff. Really exciting. So uh, that's all for this week's Fully Charged, but do join me again next week. And also, do remember to subscribe to Fully Charged. See, I've remembered to do it. Thanks a lot.